All right, we've got to crunch some numbers real quick. I'd say out of the population, roughly 40% of people would classify themselves as being into music. That's less than half, but we're still talking about a lot of people, 3.2 billion. But I'd say out of those 3.2 billion, only roughly 20% of them would know what rate your music is. But then I reckon out of those 640 million people, a solid 65 to 70% of them would know what album of the year is. And that's the one that I just cannot get over. Now, I have absolutely zero evidence to back any of this up. So why am I saying all this exactly? Well, on a recent video, an interesting situation transpired in the comments section which sort of gave me the confidence to spew these random stats. I got approximately a lot of comments about Album of the Year, and most, if not all of which, were referencing just how much better it is than Rate Your Music. And as someone who was, at the time, really only familiar with Rate Your Music, my interest was piqued, to say the least. Is there really a website that does what Rate Your Music tries to do, but actually does it correctly? Well, I'm certainly not above milking a dead horse, and I sure am curious, so let's investigate it, shall we? <laughs> Oh, and if you don't know what Rate Your Music is, I'm going to compare Album of the Year to Rate Your Music a lot in this video, so go watch the other one, it'll all make sense. So the first thing that most people notice on their first visit to Album of the Year is that when you click on the top albums of all time list, it looks a little weird. It looks really weird, actually. I recognize none of these albums from the Rate Your Music top list, or MU, or any of my favorite internet music personalities. Maybe minus the Beatles. They're still here. It's actually pretty hard to get rid of those guys. But eventually, you notice it. It being one of Album of the Year's biggest differences to Rate Your Music, and also one of its more interesting aspects. Every album on the site is rated by the users, of course, but the rating of established music critics is also listed, before and above user ratings, by the way. And by critics, we're mostly talking about magazines like Rolling Stone or independent music websites like AllMusic. Now, critic scores are a really big part of Album of the Year, and we are about to talk about them, but I want to get this top albums list thing just out of the way, because I know it is what most people see first, and it's not really that important. While these top critic scored albums are a decent representation of what music critics believe to be the best music, this top list should rarely ever be taken as gospel. You probably instantly noticed it's a sea of 100 rated albums, literally all perfect. And most of these albums are rated by, at most, five sources. There is pages and pages of perfectly scored albums, all of which literally have two reviews. This album by Blue Oyster Cult has a 95, according to critics. It is not a 95 album, but it just has only two people reviewing it. So, you know, it's just important to keep in mind when scrolling this list that past the top, like, 75, you're really only just getting the combined opinion of two sources. But the albums themselves, the actual music, this is where things get really interesting. Because the critic score can often be so drastically different from the user score. Like, take for example this album by the Pixies, Doolittle. Now the user base enjoys this album quite a bit, it has an 86 out of 100 as of recording this video, but critics they see it as one of the best albums of all time. It has a perfect score according to seven different sources. Where's the disconnect? How is that even possible? Are the users stupid? Are the critics stupid? Is it just a coincidence? Well, I don't think there's any concrete way to find out why critics love some albums so much more than the users do, but to be honest, I don't think they know what makes them love some albums so much more than the users do. Because critic scores just, they don't make sense sometimes. To be honest, the entire idea of objectively rating album after album becomes really messy after you've rated so many albums. Because inevitably, you'll end up with situations where 1989 by Taylor Swift has a perfect 100 and Mad Villainy has a 70. What? Something is not adding up here. And don't get me wrong, these are both great albums. I know it seems like I'm taking a very clear stance, but I'm really trying not to. I like these albums evenly. I'm not the one trying to tell people which one is objectively better. They are. So in the case of Doolittle, it's very possible that it's just a massive coincidence. Seven different sources thought it was a perfect 100. So boom, it's one of the best albums of all time. Whoopsies. And so I think for me, it's just one thing that I ignore on Album of the Year almost entirely. To be honest, in an ironic turn of events, I would rather see the opinion of a collective body of knowledgeable and passionate people than the opinion of some bloke who got hired to write about an album or two. It just doesn't mean as much to me. I mean, they're there for people who find they align with a certain critic or critics in general, but I think most people would agree with me in saying that they really only care about user ratings. Another thing to mention about critic ratings is that the needle drop is actually listed as a critic, which I know all of you love. I've seen what you watch. And yeah, I'd probably call it unhealthy. I think it's time for a little intermission from the music shit. I want to compare Rate Your Music versus Album of the Year's websites. How it looks, how it feels, 
the interface, the systems, that kind of stuff. And I'm just gonna be super blunt and honest here and say that I was never really a big fan of how Rate Your Music looked or how it operated. There's just something so inherently frustrating with the way that Rate Your Music feels and the way that it moves and I just have never been able to get over it. I do not know why. Album of the Year feels so much more user-friendly and so much more personal. Rate Your Music always made me feel like my own opinions and my own listening journey wasn't really that important and I should just be paying attention to everyone else's opinions because they're obviously way better. And especially after making my video on Rate Your Music, I really realized how not alone I am in using these websites as a database to catalog albums I've listened to. Album of the Year has folders to sort my ratings. It shows me my review and my rating front and center when I click on an album, and it gives me plenty of options to sort through my own rating catalog. Just take a look at this profile page. It's got my favorite albums, my recent ratings, my recent reviews, a rating distribution. I mean, it's cool. It looks sick. It makes me feel important even though I'm not. And then you look at Rate Your Music and it's like, yeah, man, I guess it's got all the same stuff, but I don't feel nearly as cool. In fact, I don't really feel much at all looking at that. I will say though, Rate Your Music does its genre sorting way better. I mean, it's, it's not really that close. Trying to find music from a certain genre on Album of the Year can feel a little bit painful. But Rate Your Music has a sea of genres that are all neatly sorted into one another, like those TikToks where white women organize their fridges way too much. In reality, none of this is really that important. I can navigate a goddamn website no matter how prehistoric it feels. I just wanted to be thorough. Talk to me. Okay, but now we can talk about what we came here for, starting with the ratings on Album of the Year. So I want to rewind a little bit here to right after I finished making my last video on Rate Your Music, because Album of the Year had actually been on my radar for a while while I was using Rate Your Music, and I browsed it a little bit to collect thorough research for that video. Outside of that, though, I had never really used the site nor heard that much about it. I had no idea what the response to that first video would be, but what I definitely did not expect was a bunch of comments all saying the same thing, and that was was just how much better album of the year is than Rate Your Music, like I said in the intro. It was actually that that made me want to take a more thorough dive onto the website. I felt like I owed it to the community. And there was one thing that became so abundantly clear to me as soon as I started using Album of the Year more. Album of the Year is a much smaller website, and one of the biggest ways that shows itself is in the ratings. Smaller, more underground projects usually have less ratings, but a higher score on Album of the Year. The audience on there appears to be a little bit more open to new stuff or niche situations. For example, the new Quadeca project has a 3 5 on Rate Your Music, which on Album of the Year is a 70. And on Album of the Year, it has an 82, which is a full 12 points higher. But wait, back up a second, because it's not just smaller projects that have a higher rating on Album of the Year. It's all albums that have a higher rating. The top album of 2023 on Rate Your Music has a 3.91, which is pretty much a 78. On Album of the Year, an 88. And I think this is a big thing that contributes to people saying that album of the year is objectively better than Rate Your Music. Chances are, when you look up an album that you love or an album that you just listened to, it's going to be a more positive rating on album of the year. And generally speaking, it feels pretty good when music that you like is liked by everyone else. But that is not to say that people's love for album of the year is just an optical illusion. If you look at the top album of last year or the year before that or any year really, you can easily tell that there's a little bit more variety in the genres on album of the year than Rate Your Music. Like people People say there's Album of the Year core, but I don't really think it actually exists. My instincts tell me that the only reason that Album of the Year core became a thing was because of Rate Your Music core being so true and so ironic. The starter pack for any Rate Your Music user is experimental hip-hop, art rock, and post-rock. If you love those three, you probably love it on Rate Your Music. And you were probably one of the people really pissed in my comments section. But all of this being said, it's important to remember that wherever you go, you're just seeing the opinions of a certain group. Whether we like it or not, album of the year or rate your music, user or critic ratings, someone's eventually going to disagree with what you believe. There is literally nowhere you can go to find all opinions you agree with. Oh. Okay, this is the fun part, because I think in my last video I made it pretty clear that I believe Rate Your Music is filled to the brim with Redditors who sat alone at lunch on purpose. I talked about how some reviews on Rate Your Music made me rethink my entire music taste out of pure insecurity and newfound self-doubt. Now, with this in mind, I really wanted to make sure going into this that I tried Album of the Year 
unbiased. But I truly believe, whether it's how the website is set up or it is actually the people on there, that Album of the Year's community is not nearly as intolerable. Whenever I would read reviews on Rate Your Music, I would always say to myself, there's no way I'm actually reading the top rated reviews. I must accidentally be sorting by recent, right? Only because oftentimes on Rate Your Music, reviews feel so long-winded and so nerdy. I just can't imagine there's any way that a large majority of people relate with them. Well, they're either super long-winded or they're one random line which is super cheeky and ironic, or at least trying to be. Either way, reading reviews on Rate Your Music never really feels that fulfilling, and that was the conclusion that I came to in that last video. But within just a few days of using Album of the Year, I got the impression that people aren't trying nearly as hard to seem smart and important. And I think this once again boils down to the fact that Album of the Year has a much smaller community, so people don't feel the need to use over-the-top vocabulary or contrived metaphors just to stand out. Let's look at an example, though. Slide by George Clanton. Let's take a look at the top Rate Your Music review. Now, with all due respect, what the fuck are you even saying? Was all of that really necessary? Like, it's not even a bad review. I bet it's a really accurate description of the album. I, I bet it's also gorgeous writing. I'm just not really looking for that kind of thing. I'm looking for an interesting angle on the album, some unique commentary, or a unique experience that someone had with the album. That is chaos. Hate to say it, but we live in a day and age where I need to be entertained. So, let's pop over to Album of the Year. Like, I, I didn't even comb through albums to find one that proved my point. This was actually the first album that popped into my head. Like, yeah, it's a little outdated, and it doesn't really make that much sense. But I enjoyed reading it. And that contrast is present everywhere on both websites. In every corner you look, you'll find some pretentious, intellectual-ass review on Rate Your Music, and you'll probably find some goofy on Album of the Year. It's very consistent on both sites, and honestly, you gotta respect it. There's one more thing that I want to bring up, and that's popular reviewers, or reviewers that you see in a lot of different albums in the top reviews. In my opinion, these people are incredibly important to the listening experience and should be cherished for the work that they do. Whether whether it's showing people new music, convincing people to listen to good albums, or telling them not to listen to the bad ones, it's good and honest work. That doesn't always seem too fun. But why exactly are they so important? You spent most of the last video telling me not to listen to individuals' opinions. What makes these guys worth my time? Oh, okay, so they've listened to a few albums. So what? Well, who better to explain it to you than an experienced reviewer and big-time YouTuber himself, Brad Tastin Music. In comment form. The people I listen to the most are those who have listened to a bunch of music, including many albums on these lists, and they just may end up hating most of the stuff in the top, and they love some cheesy obvious picks. These guys actually know what they like, and enjoy music more than most, quote, snobs I know who know next to nothing, but love Radiohead because they found out to rate your music. It comes down to the fact that whether or not our egos like it, these guys have been around the block, and if you're gonna listen to somebody to decide whether or not to listen to an album, it should probably be them. The reason I bring all of this up is not only to give credit credit where I think credit is due, but also because I don't get the impression that this is nearly as much of a thing on Rate Your Music. And I think the reason I don't get that vibe is once again because of the size of the website. There's far too many experienced opinions bouncing around for it to ever be easy to digest them all. And on top of that, you've got that same pretentiousness plaguing even the most experienced reviewers on the site. And that is where I feel like it's my job to mention that it's really important to ride the line between being influenced by somebody and just taking all their opinions as your own. I know some of you have opinions opinions eerily similar to a certain fruit resembling man. But it is really easy to fall into the trap of being in total alignment with these reviewers even before you listen to the album that they're talking about. I know I had to fight off these habits during this part of my journey, which is something that I did not experience with Rate Your Music. At the end of the day, these websites feel like walking into a lunchroom and picking a table to sit at. Because on one hand, you have the kids who wear leather jackets and talk like anime characters. And then on the other hand, you have the theater kids who are really loud and think they're really funny, but respect you a whole lot more. It's two different databases of opinions, and whichever one you find more fulfilling is the one you should probably frequent. So Liam, does this mean that the entire message of the video boils down to, it's not that deep, bro? Well, I mean, like, yeah, I guess, I... I don't know. Is that what you want to hear? In reality, this is kind of just a part two to the video I made about Rate Your Music. I dove right back into the music reviewing scene, and I just felt like I had to relay my experience. Maybe this time I had a little bit more angst and a little bit more confidence, but it was still weird. So, is Album of the Year a better website than Rate Your Music? Well, in fairness, Rate Your Music...
Nah, what am I kidding, dude? It 100% is. If I really pissed you off this time, I am looking forward to reading all three paragraphs about why and how in the comments. But other than that, my album of the year is in the description. It's been fun. I'll see you later.